This is a lampshade I'm working on. Originally I was going to put butterflies on it, but as next year is going to be the centenary of the Easter Rising, I decided to make a piece to commemorate that. I've used this motif, which comes from the Manchester School of Embroidery book, book number two. I'll put the links below to the written pattern. And what my plan is, is to divide the lampshade into three sections and I'm going to be incorporating Easter lilies and harps. This is the layout I've got for the moment. I am most probably going to turn these round to face the other way. And I'm planning to put a medallion here in this section here and then fill, do the backfill with either clothes knots or else the additional picot filling. I'm going to show you how to make this whole motif. I'm going to just describe how to go about it and show you the steps. It's not particularly difficult and I would advise you to start with one of the shamrocks before you make the flower mainly because this pattern is based on this one. The scrolls are very nice and the very first set of scrolls I made I read the pattern wrong. The pattern isn't very clear so I ended up making three little segments on the scroll whereas the pattern originally talks about two. So I'm going to leave these two with the three segments. I'm not going to do them again because a little bit of irregularity is no harm. It, we're not machines and this would prove that it's handmade. The first part of the motif I'm going to make is the shamrock. I'd advise to make this one first before you make that one because this one is based on that one. So to make the shamrock you're going to need some cord. I've got about 40 centimeters of cord, it should be enough. I'm using a 0.75 millimeter hook and I'm using number 60 thread. You can make this in any size thread you want to, but the size of the hook and the thread will affect the size of the finished motif. So to start off, I'm going to make 48 single crochet over the cord. If you find it hard at first to crochet over cord, you can hang on to the tail and it can help you make the first few stitches. So once you've got the first few stitches in, you give the cord a bit of a pull so that the end is nice and tidy. So once you've got the 48 single crochet, tighten the cord a little bit and make a slip stitch in the first stitch. So we have a little circle. I'm going to crochet the tail in with the next row. So now what we need to do is a double crochet in each stitch of the round over the cord. So you do it in a double crochet like normal but you go over the cord. So once you've filled the ring with double crochet you join up with a slip stitch to the first stitch and then you make 12 single crochet over cord. So after the 12 over cord chain 9 Turn the work and count the eighth stitch from where you started. Take, take the hook out of the chain, stick it through the eighth stitch on the row below and pull the loop through. So it's a little bit like a slip stitch but it's even less pronounced. Turn the work, one single crochet over the chain 
and 15 double crochet. After the 15 double crochet make another single crochet on the chain and then make four more single crochet on the row below over the cord. And now over the cord alone make one single crochet and 20 double crochet. So that's just over the cord. So once you've done the 20 over the 20 double crochet over the cord, you do a double crochet over the cord into the center of the little half bow. And now do a further 20 double crochet over the cord again, followed by a single crochet. In the next step, count four stitches from either the beginning or from where the little bow is, because you need the fourth on the previous row. So now take the hook out, stick it through the fourth stitch on the previous row. and pull the loop through. So now I stop and I arrange the double crochets on the cord. So make sure they're nicely shaped, not too tight, not too loose. You turn the work and over the cord make four single crochet in the back stitches of the previous row. So only in the back loops. Give a tuck to the cord so that it doesn't bulge. Chain five. And then make three single crochets in the next three stitches again only in the back loop up to the end make three single crochet chain five all along to the end of the petal make sure you only do it in the back loop if you have a look at the one I made previously just because I made that last row into the back loop it makes it stand out so if I would have done it in the two loops all this would have moved over and it would have been at the same level but because it's in the back loops you can see it forms a ridge just adjust the cord so that it lies flat that's sort of first that's the first petal so now we're going to make two more so you're going to do 12 single crochet and then make the next petal and then 12 more single crochet and makes the next petal. Now I'm going to make the ring that goes over the center. It's not an easy ring. It is in fact the most difficult part of this motif. What you're going to have to do is wind the cord 25 times around your, your forefinger and the trick in doing that is not to go too fast and to try and have even loops. By that I mean you want them to be pretty consistent because it's quite difficult to crochet around it. So I hold the cord between my thumb and my middle finger and then I gently make the turns. Not too tight and not too loose. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 
So this bit is quite tricky. And as you can see, it's going to be quite awkward to crochet around this. So I take my number 60 thread, I stick my hook through the ring, I pull the thread through and I make a single crochet. Now I'm going to start filling the ring with single crochet. What you need to look out for is to place the single crochet quite neatly one next to each other so that the cord is so that the ring is well covered. It's not easy because as you can see there are already bits that are sticking out. But if you place the stitches quite close together it will cover everything. If if you make your stitches looser or bigger and you end up doing this you're going to end up in trouble. It's not going to cover the ring very well. So the closer together you work them the better. So this is the first row of the ring. Now all go all round by chaining seven and making a single crochet in the fourth stitch on the row below. So this is the ring finished and you need to sew it securely onto the leaf. You need to make a stem for your motif and that's just two rows of single crochet over cord. But I would wait to make this until you know what size your motif is going to become because it's going to have to fit with a curve and go into a bottom part. And it's best to wait until you've got your assembling the motif so that you know what size you need. In my next video I'll be showing you how to make this flower. It's very very similar to this leaf.